Yeah, I'm surprised how many they're building these days because they're really anticipating a, a lot of people uh, signing contracts here, you know, and putting themselves in, inside these, these prisons. That's just amazing, the anticipation of the government at this point in time because it seems that the government has gotten very cocky in the fact that they don't think Americans are very smart. They treat them like animals. And, and they don't think that, I know, I mean, they probably recognize that 1% of the population is fairly smart, but beyond that, they don't seem to really care about anybody else. This is my feeling anyway. Documents that I have filed into the federal and state courts in the past four months yeah. have articulated the breakdown of how the foreign vessel, the foreign courts, are actually independent territories, not part of America. I mean, and the judges who didn't know the that. truth before are now learning what the truth is and are putting the, the question to the table, do we have this authority to arrest anybody? Can we Shanghai Americans and bring them into our vessels and then put them to work as slaves once they're Shanghai? Well, and they, they realize that the police or the sheriff, that they ordered to go out and arrest people, don't know how to read and write. They read an adverb verb. They don't know how to use correct sentence structure. And when the question was put to the, the government, a very high government official at the post office, why do you allow this to happen? He says, we hired stupid people who can't read and write, so we're not responsible for what they do. Because under Title 42, United States Code 1986, you must have knowledge to stop and correct. If you don't have knowledge and you're just following instructions or you swore an oath to a judge to do his bidding where he says three plus three equals seven and you're not going to be question you're not going to question that three plus three equals seven. You're just going to go out there and arrest somebody because they said three plus three equals six and bring them to jail. This is a very disturbing environment that we're creating in America. Well, I agree with that. It's, it's, I'm surprised that some of these magistrate or magistrative positions in the government are actually realizing and, and, and actually agreeing with you and saying, screw it, we're going to do it anyway because of what you just said. It's really interesting. Well, when I, when I filed quantum paperwork, or what we call our quantum communication, yeah. where we, we completely... The, the sentence structures to which I use are mathematically balanced so that they are legal. And the vessels that carry these words are the courts. As a plenipotentiary judge, I'm a chief judge over judges. Right. Because I'm the only judge in America that has a quantum oath, files quantum paperwork, has quantum rules and regulations to open a court up, and by opening a court, I mean, I bring forth the facts on the vessel paper, which now becomes the court. And I've articulated this to the judges, and you know what they do? They say, well, you can't bring in the truth paperwork into our courtrooms. We only have illusions. Now, another form of this illusion is in all contests. Now, the word contest starts with C-O-N, which is the abbreviation for contract, right, for constitution. Con. <laughs> yeah. Okay, in all contests, yeah. it could be a baseball game, we have a level playing field. Football game, we have a level playing field. Hockey, uh, soccer, volleyball, doesn't matter what kind of game you want to play, they're all going to have a level playing field except when you go into a courtroom. Now you've got four different planes in a courtroom. You have the jury box plane. Now if you were, look up the word box, it's an enclosed area which cannot be considered. A jury box cannot hear, evid hear evidence or see witnesses. And nothing can be considered by the jury. The witness stand is a plane in a box above the above the courtroom, and because it's above the rest of it, when the person testifies, he's talking to himself in a box. Then you have the, the flat plane where the, the claimant sits, or the petitioner, or the prosecution, 
or the defendant, the vasily. Those are other; those are different terminologies we use. Uh, defendant means no contact, no contract. Respondent means no contract. Re meaning no. Spawn means talk, from speak. So if you have a no speak individual, you have a you know like in a divorce, you have a petitioner and a respondent. Well, the petitioner is petitioning the court, and the respondent can't he be heard. So the petitioner always wins as the moving party. <laughs> well, that's true. It's, it's, it's true. In 99% of the cases, right? You go in there defeated. And then you have the claimant and defendant. Well, the claimant or the prosecutor, but then the word PRO from prosecute means no contract. And the word defendant, DE means no, of the word defendant. See, the one thing you have to realize is any time you have a word that has a prefix that means no, they are obviously using a prefix of a negative condition for a positive condition. Now, I don't care what you believe that word means. If you take away the fact that there is a no in front of it, they must obviously be able to vacate the condition of a fact. If it's a fact, it means it's under contract. So therefore, all prefixes that mean no, like D-E and R-E and P-R-A-E-I-O and U, or a vowel used as a single syllable, or a vowel that is used as, uh, as followed by two consonants to start a word, those all mean no contract. And you can sit down and take apart the entire dictionary. Look up every word that has a vowel with two consonants following in the synonym, and you'll see that there's a negative condition of state there as a synonym, and it means no contract. Interesting. So what what happens when you go in with these petitions like you have in the last four months? What I mean, obviously, you, some people obviously know you quite well, but I mean... To well, I'm known by all the judges in the United States. I'm not a mystery to anybody after 27 years. No, I know. <laughs> you go in there, do you get any newbies, you know, any new judges or new DAs or anything that just like, what, you know? Because I know you do this a lot. We get We get people who question. We get people who pay attention. We get people who cooperate the first time, then they go and they investigate, and they're told, if you cooperate, you're fired. Wow. That's what is the first heavy. rule of business? Never hire your replacement. Yeah. Wow. And if you are filing paperwork where the judge tells the district attorney, tells the, the opposing party, tells the clerk of the court, if you process this paperwork, I will fire you or make your life a living hell. That's they're going, well, what do I got to lose? Yeah. You know, their oath says that they must file the paperwork. They must take, under Rule 44, a foreign court who is under contract by the American Corporation, the United States of America Corporation. Right. So so do are a lot of people getting fired just out of curiosity that work in the courts now when you come in? There Those people who have filed our paperwork... All of a sudden, like we go back there to talk with them a second time, they don't work here anymore. Wow. And so this has got this word has gotten around to the clerks, and so the clerks are coming back with, uh, we can't file that. I'm going, what do you mean? It says right here that the courts are always open, that you must take a grievance or a complaint from any person filing it into this court. They're saying, well, no, we, we have a determination that we can refuse that. I'm going, oh. So the clerk of the courts is now going to make a judicial decision to stop the ab ability of a citizen for making a grievance. That that's true. That happens just about everywhere anyway. You know. I've told okay, no, but they things. they swear an oath to file papers and then turn around and don't. Yeah. They take taxpayers' money to do a job and then don't do their job. Yeah. They swear they swear an oath. To process the, the paperwork correctly, you know, in the past they always did it, yeah, but they like couldn't that. win the cases. The judges and the attorneys came back and said, we can't defeat Miller's technology. You know that in, on December 6th in Riverside, California, the judges and the attorneys got together and they had an ex parte communication hearing for a Dr. Miller who asked them, will you please show me your oath written in the truth? 